Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the shape of Jupiter. The rotation of Jupiter is enormously fast. It's actually the fastest rotating planet in the solar system. It's also the biggest planet in the solar system. And it's a gas planet. That combination causes the shape of Jupiter to be, well, really skewed, so to speak. It is a lot wider than it is tall. That fast rotation caused, caused by, well, the fast rotation and then the fact that it's a gas planet, the forces, the gravitational forces on the planet are not sufficient to hold in the equator as much as it can on the poles because that fast rotational speed. And so therefore the centripetal forces cause that bulge to exist near the equator. If we then look at the size of the planet, the radius at the equator is over 71,000 kilometers, which is over 11 Earths, about 11.2 Earths. And the radius at the poles is less than 70,000, or less than 67,000 kilometers, which is about 10.5 Earths. So there's an enormous difference between the two. If we do a comparison, it's a difference of almost 7%. In other words, Jupiter is about 7% wider than it is tall. Now, all planets do experience some sort of bulging. The Earth does bulge a little bit at the equator compared to the poles, but there we're only talking about a few kilometers. Here we're talking about many thousands of kilometers. So yes, you can see that Jupiter bulges out quite a bit. So we can say it's caused by the fast motion, the centripetal forces, and the fact that it's a gas planet. It's not a solid planet like the Earth, so it's not held together with that rigidity that you find with the crust and the mantle and so forth, the planet is much more able to flex because of the consistency. Now, if you were to be at the equator, what's astounding is that you'd be moving at 12.6 kilometers per second, which is 45,000 kilometers per hour or 28,000 miles per hour. And that is faster than the escape speed from the Earth. So if you want to get away from the Earth with a spacecraft, with a rocket, you don't need to even travel that fast in order to get away. At the equator, you would be traveling faster than the speed that most rockets have when they leave the gravitational force of the Earth. So it's absolutely phenomenal how fast you'd be traveling if you were at the equator. Of course, if you were to be at the equator, if you could stand on the equator, which of course it's a gas planet, you can't stand on it, but if you could stand there, you wouldn't really notice it that much. I mean, what you have, if you have instruments, you could do, you can feel that sensation of that centripetal force because you're rotating around this giant planet at this enormous rate. But other than that, there would not be much of an effect of being there. It's just astounding how fast you would be moving. And yes, the oblateness of the planet, the shape of the planet, you can see it is much wider than it is tall. You can actually see it. If you look at a picture, it's actually noticeable when you look at it. And that's the result of the fastest roving planet in the solar system. So what percent is the bulging on Earth? Oh, on Earth is a small fraction of a percent. It's like 0, 0 0.00 something. It's really, really small. So we're talking about the difference is about seven kilometers, I believe, in radius between the equator and the pole. So it's a very, very small quantity. Yeah, but, no, if you're just talking about distance, Jupiter is a lot bigger. Than yeah, Earth. indeed, Jupiter is a lot bigger, but as a percentage of the size of Jupiter. On Earth, you can't really tell on the picture. On the picture, the Earth looks perfectly round, um, spherical. On Jupiter, it's very obvious that it's not. 